I'm here. Oh, okay. I didn't know whether I was in the right place. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Mrs. Strickland, principal of Land Trip Elementary. I have 3 p.m. Uh, we can begin at this time. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Uh, again, the purpose for us meeting today is to have a virtual parent meeting and to share some information with parents of what it'll look like to return face to face here at Land Trip. Let me go to the next slide to go over a couple of norms before we get started. As you uh, come into the to the virtual parent meeting, please make sure that you mute your microphone unless you're going to be speaking. We will be having a question answer question and answer session at the end. And also, please know that this will be this will be recorded. Next, use the chat section for questions. Mrs. Vicente, our assistant principal, will be keeping up with the questions. Also, please be present when you're in this meeting here until 4 p.m. So we have a couple, another 59 minutes to share as much information as we can. I do want to let you know that we want to honor your time. At 4 p.m., we do have a Spanish version, which will also be recorded. Two more things for our norms. Please assume goodwill. And finally, please help us follow the Land Trip way. The Land Trip way is to be kind, be a leader, be your best, and to be responsible. So the agenda for today, we have a couple of items we want to share with our parents. We want to talk today about arrival and dismissal at Land Trip, daily schedule, trans student and staff safety, potential exposure or school closures, and we will be ending the meeting with the questions and answer session. So before we get started, I want to let you know that there is nothing better sometimes than seeing visuals. And we do have a video that a lot of our teams have been working on diligently to show a video to our students and to our parents. So at this time, we're going to attempt to share with you this video. Uh, it is definitely hot off the press. And Miss Actor, if you can share the video with us. Thank you. Is it big enough? Can you guys see it? Yes, ma'am. Lancer family, this is Mrs. Strickland, the principal. And I'm Ms. Vicente, the assistant principal. We want to welcome everybody to the 2020-2021 school year. Today, we're going to take you on a tour of what Land Trip will look like. Come join us. This year, our arrival procedures will be different. The only one coming in through here is the bus. And here comes the school bus now. So when the bus arrives, the bus will stop right over here and students will be getting off and stopping at the yellow lines. Once, once bus riders arrive, they will have their temperature taken. Have you been around anyone that as the students come in, please make sure to sanitize your hands. Remember, this may take a while, so bring your patience. As the students are having a temperature check, the bus riders will come in and get some Germex or hand sanitizer. And as you will see, they will have to put signs on the floor, six feet apart. This year, this gate will be the entrance and dismissal for fourth and fifth grade students. The gate will open at 7.25 a.m. 
the students will walk up, get their temperature taken, ask if they have any of the symptoms, and will get some hand sanitizer and go straight to their classroom. This is the second and third grade entrance and dismissal area. This door will open at 7.30 a.m. Students arrive, they must stand six feet apart, get their temperature taken, ask if they have any of these symptoms, and get some hand sanitizer and go straight to their classroom. This is the first grade arrival and dismissal gate. First graders will arrive here and this gate will open at 7.40 a.m. This entrance is for pre-K and kinder students only. The entrance will open at 7.50 in the morning. The dismissal will be at 2.45. Remember to follow the social distancing signs on the floor. So remember, Lantrip family, this year it's going to look different. The arrival and dismissal locations will be on Dallas and Sydney Street. All ways are going to look very different. As the students are coming into the school, they will practice social distancing by following the signs on the floor. They will go straight into their classrooms. They will all follow the Lantern hallway expectations. Remember, the conversations are level zero to one. Help, if you need help when you're walking in, in the hallway, you must raise your hand. Activity, walk in the hallway, hands to yourself. Movement, walking quietly. Participation, eyes are forward, hands to yourself in your personal space. And finally, to be successful, get to your class classroom briskly and safely. This is what the classroom will look like. When the teacher needs to work with the student one-on-one, -on -one, the student will come to the kidney table for small group instruction. Students will line up with social distancing when they have to use the restroom. To go to the restroom, the procedures are the same of following social distancing. The students will come into the restroom, follow the signs that are on the floor. Three students in the restroom at a time. We have restroom expectations. The conversation should be no talking, zero noise. Help, if you need assistance, report back to your teacher that will be standing right here. Activity, go, flush, wash, and trash. Move briskly to yourself facing forward. Participation, please help us have a clean restroom. And finally, success. When you come out of the restroom, you will come and wash your hands. Remember to use soap all the time. Palm to palm, back of the hands, between your fingers, the base of the thumb, your fingernails, and your wrists. You will come, dry your hands, Put it in the trash, and this year, the water fountains will not be accessible. We want to remain safe. We are encouraging all students to bring their own water bottle. And don't forget, use a Sharpie. Sharpies are used to write your name and your grade, or your name and your teacher's name, so that everyone knows that this is your water bottle. Don't forget, write your name on everything with a Sharpie. Your lunchbox, your jackets, your sweaters, your gloves, your water bottle, all of your supplies, your backpack, everything should have your name with a Sharpie. Breakfast and lunch will be served in the classroom. During lunchtime, the TA or teacher will come around and put hand sanitizer, 
to each student's hands. Yes, the students can take off their mask to eat their lunch. They are not to be speaking. They are to be eating quietly. When they're done, they put their mask back on. Trash will be collected by the teacher or teacher assistant. Thank you. Yes, students will be able to go to recess. Before they go out, they must get their little squirt. Come on through, friends. Their squirt of hand sanitizer. They must keep their masks on at all times. They can run around practicing social distancing, but they cannot use the playground equipment. When it's time to come back in, come back in, my friends. Students must practice the social distancing on the floor. We are marked at six. The floor is marked at six feet social distancing. Come on in, friends, making sure that their masks are securely on and squirting hand sanitizer again as they come in the building. Another thing that will be different this year is ancillary. Mrs. Vicente and I are standing right outside the PE room. Music, PE, and ancillary teachers will go into the classroom. The students will not be moving around the hallways into these areas. Welcome. I am Nurse Montelongo, and I will be your school nurse for the 2020-21 school year. Here are a few things uh, to get you ready for face-to-face -face instruction. You need to remember and practice at home is to wear your mask. Everyone will be required to wear a mask this school year, and it must be worn the way I'm wearing it to cover your nose and your mouth. Here are some examples how not to wear your mask. Don't wear it around your neck. Don't wear it on your forehead, under the nose, or only on your nose, on your chin, dangling from your ear or your arm. Again, your mask must always cover your nose and your mouth. Another thing we need to be practicing a lot this school year is washing your hands. Wash, wash your hands for 20 seconds, which is roughly singing the ABC song, ABC, until you finish. The last uh, thing I want to cover is distancing. We must keep six feet in between each other. So again, this school year, practice wearing your mask, washing your hands, and keeping your distance. So what is it going to look like if your child gets sick at school? If your child has any of the COVID symptoms, they will be placed in our isolation room, which is over here. Then I need to report all cases of any students with symptoms to our health and medical offices. It's also very important that when you're called to pick up your child, you must come pick up your child. That will determine how, how long the school will be closed and when. So the sooner you come to pick up your child, the sooner we can start making the, taking the, the next steps. Again, this is Nurse Montelongo and welcome to the 2020 school year. So Lanford family, that concludes our tour of what the school year will look like. Reminder, everyone must wear a mask. We will practice social distancing and also the arrival and dismissal locations will be different. We look forward to a successful school year. See you soon. Thank you, Ms. Thank Akmar. You, Ms. Akmar. If you could please post please the PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you. So just so a couple just of reminders time. before I continue to the next piece. Want to remind parents that this meeting is being recorded. 
And if you want to see the meeting at a slower pace with the video, everything is going to be on the Lantrip School website. You can find it under resources and then again under parent resources. All of this information will be recorded and available for anyone who could not join us today. So let's talk about the arrival and dismissal. You saw the video, but let's talk about certain things in more detail. Next slide. So where are the five locations? As the video showed, we are not going to be following the entrances from last year. Every grade level will have a different entrance. We're going to start with our upper grades. Our fifth and our fourth grade students will be coming in through the hallway on the gate, which used to be called the Walker Gate, and they will be coming in at 725. For grades three and two, second and third grade, they will be coming in from the entrance on Dallas Street, and that gate will open at 7. 30. First grade, I know last year a lot of our first graders were used to coming in in the front of the campus, but this year they will be coming in through the back on Dallas Street. And that is at 740 AM. Pre-K and Kinder Hallway will be the entrance on Dallas Street and they will be coming in please at 750 AM. And if a child comes, arrives to campus on the bus, the only location, the only people that will be coming in in that entrance of the bus area will be the buses for HISD. And those will, those will be coming in from the cafeteria and they should be arriving about 730. Next slide, please. So dismissal, what time, dismissal, what time will that look like? The same gate that they entered is the same gate that they will exit. For fifth and fourth grade, dismissal will be at three o'clock. For second and third grade, the dismissal will be at three o'clock. For first grade on Dallas Street will be at three o'clock. And then for the little ones, pre-K and kinder, that will be on Dallas and Eastwood at 2.45. And our buses do pick up students and they depart at 3 p.m. Next slide. A couple of other pieces of information in reference to arrival and dismissal locations. Each entrance will have three personnel. Two will be taking the temperature and one will manage the social distancing rules. Each entrance will have two thermometers. Each entrance will have a PPE table. The table will have masks if students do not have masks or do not come with the mask. Each entrance is labeled six feet distance on the floor with a yellow tape. And an example, if Mary is late to school and she does not make the entrance where they're supposed to come in, the parent must escort Mary to the front office. Next slide. So what does the current schedule look like? I'm going to share some pieces of information in reference to the current schedule. The restrooms, as you saw in the video, the restrooms are all labeled. We follow the CHAMPS expectations. CHAMPS is one of our social and emotional learning uh, programs that we have at Landtrip in order to make sure that everybody meets the expectations and knows what to do. They are posted and there will be three students at a time in the restroom. How often are the restrooms cleaned? They are cleaned once every hour. Yes, our custodians will be very, very busy. Ancillary classes will be pushing in so students will not be heading uh, walking in the hallway. Private buses, no private buses will be allowed and no after school programs will be allowed until the COVID, the COVID-19 gets, uh, the restrictions are released. Breakfast and lunches will be silent as to not spread droplets while talking. 
the lunch schedule. Students will eat breakfast and lunch in the classroom. Water fountains. We will not be using water fountains as you saw in the videos. We are encouraging students to bring bottled waters and as always, we always encourage everyone to constantly, constantly use markers or Sharpies to write and label all of your objects. Uh, often, often every school year we see many, many, many parents spending a lot of money on items and we can't return them to students because they have no names on the items. Next is recess. Students will have recess as you saw in the video in certain assigned areas. Yes, the students must wear the mask at all times, even outside, but they cannot use the playground equipment. Next slide. Transportation. Will HISD have transportation? Yes, it will be provided for special education, homeless and priority students. Once preliminary numbers of our face to face instruction, once we know that data, transportation will be determined for other student groups. Also in the past, as in the past, if you are taking transportation, route information will be provided directly to families receiving transportation. Transportation services will enhance cleaning protocols and they're going to be also utilizing the physical distancing on all the buses and buildings. HISD does have a video on transportation of what that will look like. The department also will implement uh, contingency plans for responding to student bus riders and for bus drivers who develop a presumed or a confirmed case of COVID. No private buses this year due to the pandemic. Next slide. Student and staff safety. Before I go on, I just want to remind, I noticed that we have some new people joining us. I want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded. If you know of any other family members or guardians that could not join us today, it is being recorded and it can be located on the school website under resources, parent resources. Finally, we will have a question and answer session at the end. So if you will just please make sure to write down your questions, we will answer all of your questions as we get to them. Student and staff safety. For students, upon entering, a wellness table will be available and they will take student temperatures. All students and staff are required to wear PPEs. PPE will be provided daily from HISD, yet they can bring their own masks if appropriate for work and school. The number of students limited in classrooms will also be facing the same direction. If student does not want to wear their mask, the teacher will contact administrators we will educate the student, but if the student refuses to wear a mask, the parent will be contacted and this will be a possible virtual referral. Parents will not be able to access the cafeteria to have breakfast or lunch with students. So visitation is limited and for staff, the health and safety of everyone is a priority. The staff and all employees for HISD will have to be screened daily using an app called the Check Into Work. Campus visitors will be limited and appointments must be made. Visitors will be screened before entering the campus and everyone must wear a mask. Mobile hand sanitizers are available for all. Teachers will have plexiglass barriers per class. Signage throughout the building and on the floors and the walls have been placed. Teachers will have a classroom cleaning kit, first aid kit that has band-aids, masks, disinfectant wipes and gloves. And then again, parents, please help us by labeling all water bottles, backpacks, lunch kits, jackets, 
student supplies with the Sharpie as no sharing of items will be allowed. Next slide. So what happens, Mrs. Strickland, if a student or a staff member is potentially exposed to COVID-19? We have certain steps that we must follow. Number one, the school nurse will be notified immediately to report exposure, suspected or confirmed positive COVID-19. Number two, the school nurse will be notified immediately to report exposure, suspected or confirmed positive COVID-19. The nurse will contact the student or the employee to investigate and a report must be completed called the COVID-19 case report for Dr. Blackman's team. Dr. Blackman is our doctor here with HISD and she has a team that investigates cases. Number three, the nurse will escort the student or staff to the isolation room located near the nurse's office. Please, please know that it is so important that we have parents and guardians correct demographic information of phone calls and cell numbers, uh, phone numbers and cell numbers, so that in case we need to call parents, that they are reachable. Number four, identify areas or buildings where students and employees have been located so that we can have cleaning done in those locations. And finally, number five, contact parents, students and staff to inform them of possible exposure and school closure. Please note, and I wanna repeat this, Mrs. Strickland cannot close a campus. The principal, administrators, we cannot close a campus. Only HISD's Dr. Blackman's team can close a campus. Next slide. Number six, should a building be closed, all parents will be notified. Tell us, Mrs. Strickland, we will do emails, we will send emails, we will do class dojo, we will do the Land Trip School website. HISD facilities will determine the deep cleaning and sanitation timeline. In the event that school is closed, students will continue the following day, continue with instruction virtually until the building is reopened. Students are expected to take their laptops home daily and for sure the little ones, pre-K, kinder, first grade students, should have their iPads at home. Next slide. So there is something called a COVID-19 dashboard to ensure transparency and provide families with as much as possible. HISD launched a COVID-19 online dashboard that tracks how many numbers of confirmed COVID-19 students and COVID-19 confirmed staff members on campus, how many cases we have. The dashboard was developed using TEA's guidelines for reporting COVID-19. It will be updated on a daily basis. This will allow people to review the student and staff data by location or and district-wide. It also includes a so that you can visibly see where the cases are throughout the district of HISD. The COVID-19 dashboard can be assessed at www, and then the link is there. Please, please note, Mrs. Strickland, was it you or was it, what is the name of the student? What is the name of the parent? Who was the employee? Please know we have something called FERPA. Please know that the district will strictly follow all applicable privacy laws as it relates to the release of personal health insurance, uh, health, personal health information. We cannot share, oh yes, Mrs. Strickland, she's the one who had COVID. We cannot give names. 
often, I know you don't believe it, but we do get asked, was it this little boy? Was it that little boy? I'm sorry, parents, due to FERPA, I cannot share with you. I will just be able to let you know that a certain case has been identified. Next slide. So here are some important links. Mrs. Strickland, I really want to do some more research. Uh, I'm very worried. I want to know more about this. These are three links that have a wealth and a plethora of information. The first one is the COVID-19 dashboard that you are welcome to see and use on a daily basis. The next one is the parent guide for HISD reopening. And then the last one is the HISD Communicable Disease Plan. Next slide. So we're asking that anybody that attended this meeting today, if you could please click on this link. It is an attendance link. Ms. Actor, I think the link is removed. Or is she going to show us? I'm going to put it in the chat. Oh, thank you, Ms. Actar. That's great. So parents, if you are here and you sat, uh, I know it's 3.31 p.m., but if you uh, sat here through all this information, please, please sign in so that we know how many parents and who were the parents that were able to listen and hear our parent meeting, our virtual parent meeting. The link she is adding the link to the chat area at this time. So at this time, we're going to go into some questions. If you have questions, there are two ways that you can ask. Number one, at the very top, you will see a little hand that you can press that and it'll raise your hand. Our assistant principal, Mrs. Vicente, will uh, call on you and we will answer as many questions as possible and or you can also write in the chat but please raise your hand as that is one of the easiest way that we can see who has questions and hello and so we do have questions on the chat so i'm going to begin with those Ms. Strickland. great what time will you close the gates is the first question uh, close the gate from the morning. In the morning, the yes, for entrance. Entrance. We usually give about what is it? Um, in the past, it used to we used to close the front office at seven thirty, because instruction should begin at seven thirty. But because we are starting later, because we're trying to, um, uh, in order for there not to be too much traffic outside, we're having different grades arriving at different times. Probably eight o'clock instruction for everybody should definitely start at eight o'clock. And please know parents, that's a really good question. Please know parents, be patient with us. Um, we've never been through a pandemic before. Uh, the entire planet Earth is going through this and every educational institution you can think of is uh, pondering on how to keep our our employees, our staff, our children, our students safe. So uh, please work with us and be flexible as we are going to be learning together. Next question. What if we have more than one child? Does par do parents have to wait with child or children until walking in? Yes, I want to say one of those. That's a really good question for anyone who has multiple children. I am going to uh, ask that you have your older students come in first and that you wait with them because the scariest thing is this. What if I'm a parent and I'm standing outside and when they take a temperature for my daughter or my son, he or she has a, a temperature. He has a temperature of 102. And if the parent is there, we can say, mom, dad, the child has a temperature here. Let's take it two, three times. Maybe it's the thermometer. But if the child does have a temperature, we cannot allow the child to come in. And so the parent can take him home. One of um, one of the biggest uh, scariest things that I have had a nightmare about, because I want to be very transparent here, that the parent pulls up, the child gets off and the parent drives away. And then we take the temperature of the child 
and he has 102 degrees and there's no adult there to talk to. So yes, it's it's going to be, I uh, there's going to be lines and I would rather people know that we're going to follow our HISD communicable disease plan. We're going to follow our CDC guidelines. We're going to follow our Lantrip safety plan. Is it going to be time consuming? Yes, but we can all sleep better knowing that we're following the procedures and the protocols. Kind of like, I like to use the example of if you fly on a plane, is it longer and time consuming to take off our shoes and take off the belt and so and so? Yes, but you also have peace of mind that hopefully um, things were, were, you know, it's keeping us safer, right? Uh, next question, Ms. Vicente. What about YMCA after school care? Does this include the YMCA after school care? I And they want to know, is that still going on? YMCA after school care? As of right now, we will not be having a YMCA because of the movement of students and the number of students available. So as of right now, we're hoping there's so many things, parents. There's a lot of what if, what if this, what if that, what if this? We can't tell if this COVID percentage is going to increase, decrease. You know, we have this whole plan. And what if tomorrow the percentages go up and Judge Hidalgo or, or the mayor uh, Sylvester or the governor Abbott, if they say, nope, we're shutting down. We all go virtually. I know that this is a lot of planning and we really don't know if this COVID is going to be leaving or not. So we're kind of put in this, I tell everybody, I would rather over plan than not plan at all. So um, at this time, for this semester, we will not have a YMCA, nothing after school, no after school functions, no no, so, no soccer, no sports. No. To me, safety is the priority. I want us all to sleep at night knowing that we're doing all of our part to keep our children and our employees as safe as possible. So, Next question. Yes, if my child has a pre-existing condition, will they be treated any differently for example, asthma? That's a great question. And that is something that we we'll probably have to talk to our nurse Montelongo uh, about. Anything and everything that is personal and medical will have to go through certain procedures with our uh, HISD medical team. And is drop off going to be vehicle or walk up? You can you can drive up, but we're recommending everybody to park and walk your child because imagine parents. If you just drive up and say bye, 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 sweetie, bye, baby, whatever that if the child has a fever, he will be have to be escorted into the isolation room and now we're bringing a child with the fever through the hallways and into the building. So we really, really want parents to escort. Is it an inconvenience? I'm sure it is, but at the end of the day, safety is a priority. My daughter will remain in the virtual learning environment. Will she have the same teacher if her teacher will be on campus? Yes, as of right now, we are having all of our teachers come face to face and they will be doing both virtual and face-to-face -face instruction. And I have to tell you all, just because I'm an educator myself, it is very hard, it is very difficult, uh, time consuming and planning. I 100% understand because I'm an educator and I, we've seen it, but um, we are split with our data and that is right now as I, um, we had a faculty meeting yesterday and as I was telling the faculty, we said this is the data for the next six weeks. Parents, every six weeks until hopefully this COVID is gone or until we get further instruction, you are being asked for your selection. If you don't feel comfortable or if you if you want them to come face to face and something happens and you can't sleep at night, you know, every six weeks you are being asked to do a selection if you want your child to come face to face or virtual. Thank you. So we have a couple of those same questions. This sure. one says, 
what changes for my child since I choose I, I chose to continue virtual learning? So uh, let me just share about that. So the objectives and the TEKS are all the same, face to face or virtual, right? Because the teacher still has to teach the certain objectives. Uh, I did have, we did, Ms. Vicente and I had some parents that would ask us, Ms. Strickland, what do you think? Should I bring my parent, should I bring my child or should I not? We cannot make that decision for you. You as a parent have to make that decision. You need to do what's in the best interest for your family and your child. Um, we cannot tell you to choose one or the other. And so that is definitely up to the parents. Then it says, will the teachers change if my child stays virtual? And you kind of answered that already. It was another same question. Mm -hmm. No, the teachers will not change. I have the same question asked by Ms. Wynn and Mr. Rocha. Also, will you have a meeting for online students as well about how things are going to change? So this video is, is provided for all students and all parents so that whenever they come back to campus, that they know what it's going to look like. Is the COVID dashboard active now and can we see it? Yes, absolutely. Yes, you can. It is active right now and it'll tell you how many students have, co have been identified with COVID-19 and how many employees have been identified. And well, can, I just, can, yes. I, can I just say one more thing about COVID? You know, often and, and you know, from our employees, um, the administrative team, um, 12 month employees, we've been here for the last two months on campus. And I want you to know not a day goes by where we, you know, we're, we're nervous too. I, I'm not going to lie to you. We're, 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 we don't want to catch COVID. Nobody does, right? But there's so many uncertainties because we don't know if the percentages are going to go up, if the percentages are going to go down. But one thing I do know is that we want everybody to know we love our kids, we love our employees. We're going to do whatever it takes to keep it clean, to keep it organized. Is it extra work? Absolutely. I cannot even begin to tell you. Our non-instructional personnel, our custodians, they, ha they had a clean out all of their classrooms. We had to label the floors. We have to label the um, the desks. It's just, it's, it's really truly cleaning everything out because as they say, COVID tends to land on items. And if you don't clean, that it can live, the virus can live for certain, um, can live for certain uh, periods of time, right? So, we're all in this situation together and please know we're doing everything in our power to make it as safe. Now, with that being said, I know I have parents that uh, we have all kinds of, of, of perspectives, right? Oh, Miss Strickland, why do they have to wear a mask? It's no big deal. Or, oh, Miss Strickland, just, you know, I've got to get to work. Just, you know, I got to send my child. Every family has a different situation. And although one situation might not work for you, but it's very much needed for the other. So please know everything we do is going to be um, to the best of our ability. Next question, Ms. Vicente. Yes, ma'am. After reviewing the guidelines in school and I ch uh, choosing virtual for my child and decide to, if I chose virtual for my child and I decide to change it to face to face, can I change it? If so, where and how? So a couple of things, HISD asked parents to please make a decision by a certain deadline because if we have everybody changing their minds every day, well, today we're going to change it to face to face. No, tomorrow we're going to do virtual. It's hard for us to plan accordingly on, it's hard for us to plan on the building. It's hard for us to plan with personnel. So that, that is the reason for us saying, Please, uh, Dr. Lathan saying, please give us every six weeks. If you want to change your mind, you're welcome to do so. Um, and then we have, so I should not sign up and pay for YMCA because I just got called. I just, they just called her. So no, we're we not having contact. YMCA. No, we're not having YMCA this semester. Um, um, so maybe hopefully in the spring, I would love to, but ma'am, 
in a in Houston, please everybody remember we're in level red, which means yeah, the news. I, I think I heard the news last night saying that our percentages were going down, which is great, but you know we can't not we can't stop wearing the mask or stop doing all this and that. You know we have to continue um, to keep going until we're at zero percent, right? Or well, we hope, right? Next question. Due to the transition and the reality of the situation, will teachers understand and politely address the students and their needs? These kids are already stressed, anxious, and overwhelmed. So that's a great question. That's a great topic. Ma'am, I really believe that HISD um, has really done a good job. Dr. Lathan really did a good job of really investing in what we call SEL, social and emotional learning. And here at Land Trip, um, we've always had, I know y'all know our kindness fairy, Miss, uh, Miss Kate Barrera. She's our communities and schools manager. And then now this year, we have another wonderful addition to our school. Her name is Miss Elizabeth Garza, and she is the wraparound services representative. And the reason I'm bringing their names up is because they work really hard in coming up with positive supports for our children that are going through social uh, concerns and not only for children for us as adults as well um we have and and yesterday as we had our faculty meeting i have many many employees that are really nervous about coming back face to face and that's for everybody but this is the reason why i ask that we have to we have to take all of these regulations and rules seriously the masks have to be on um, because it's a matter of someone getting sick and God forbid, but it can be worse, right? So um, so please know that we have to take all these measures very, very seriously. Next question. Yes, so this person says they chose for their son uh, to keep him at home for virtual. Oh, no, wait, yes. Yes, she chose uh, in school for her son. Can I keep him at home for virtual learning now? Is it too late? So she's the inverse. Mm. Okay. Well, the at this time, like uh, as I was sharing earlier, we have decided, you know, th there was that deadline of when you can submit your 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 time. Now, if you have something else going on, feel free to talk to your teacher and your teacher can talk to us if there are certain issues. Everything is a case by case because if a child uh, didn't have asthma yesterday, but all of a sudden something happens and they have a medical incident and now he's got um, diabetes and now he's got all these other things and you know the parent comes with doctor's notes and say, hey, look, I don't want my child to be face to face. We're going to go back to virtual. You know, all that is a case by case situation because of course we want a child to be healthy, right? I mean, we don't want to ever cause any more stress to anybody. So it'll be on a case by case, ma'am. Next question. Okay, so, so we have a parent responding that from what she knows, it's only uh, changing every six weeks, which is true. And then will you be sharing any type of traffic flow map for dismissal? as there are several grades dismissing at three, and this could create a traffic jam. So yes, mm -hmm. go ahead, Ms. Vicente. We're going to try to scaffold it. I know that it was three o'clock on there, but we will scaffold it because at 245, that's when we dismiss pre-K and K. And then since first grade is dismissing from the back for the first time, we are also going to probably five minutes after pre-K is out that you come by first grade, and then make your way to second and third and then fourth and fifth so that it is the inverse in the afternoon so that we can get all of the students out and remember our teachers also have to be relieved so we would appreciate everyone be on time to pick up their children so that they can also be ready to to continue planning or continue doing what they need to do in their classroom all right will you be sharing any type of oh that was how will GT studies be handled for children uh, are, who are attending face-to-face? -face? So um, this is that's a 
question. Please know that Lantrop is an environmental science and magnet school. And for our GT students, we our teachers actually got professional development from something called SELF, C-E-L-F. And it is uh, having project based learning really truly with the focus for us is environmental science. So there will be projects that our GT students have to do. And also we also have something called Renzuli where there's enrichment lessons for students that are GT. How many children will be in each classroom, Ms. Strickland? As of right now, our largest in-person uh, class is 14. What does priority students uh, mean for transportation as my kids are new to Lantra? So, Bam, um, I'm going to give you an example. If a child is identified um, <clears throat> with a learning disability, if a child is uh, under the umbrella of special ed, if the child is under the umbrella of homeless, if a child is under the umbrella of um, maybe being under the foster care system, there's different examples of that, and that's what they would call a priority student. So I have another parent about a YMCA issue. I know that all was all just discussed at YMCA, but what are we to do if they've already taken the payment and are telling us that they are available? Does this mean that they might be picking up kids? I'm confused with the contradictory answers from the school and the YMCA. That's a great question. Uh, I'll be more than happy to reach out to YMCA and kind of have them reach out to all the parents. I can do that. Uh, I just want to note uh, before you keep going, Ms. Vicente, we have eight minutes before the Spanish version, but please, please keep all of your questions, put them on the chat because we want to make sure that we answer all of your questions. We can always put them on the um, school website. If more than one student shows symptoms during the day at the same time, will those with symptoms be put in an isolation room together? Yes, ma'am. We only have one isolation room. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, sir. Whoever that whoever asked that question. Ms. Garcia, can you share the percentage of Lantrop students who will be doing virtual learning and how many will be present at the campus? Yes, we have it right now by grade level. Um, we can post that for the next six weeks. We can we can put it on the school website. It's almost an even split, correct? But it really is. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that. There is almost an even split. Like, let's say if I have uh, 20 students that 9 and 11 or 10 and 10, I do want everybody to know that our largest numbers are in pre-kinder. Our largest numbers of face-to-face -face are in pre-kinder. My daughter is wearing her mask daily in public, but not for long periods of time. What happens if my daughter says she can't breathe of the mask after a few hours of wearing it at campus? She will be attending kindergarten. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So this is the reason why the school nurse on the video was talking about start practicing now because it took us as adults quite some time how to get used to breathing in the mask. This is definitely something that's not going to happen overnight. It is definitely going to take time for them to learn. So we're kind of telling parents, please practice the mask, uh, wearing the mask uh, now. The other thing um, we know that sometimes, well, we're going to go to the grocery store, so put on your mask. But if you can say, OK, starting tomorrow, you know, similar to like a marathon, let's wear your mask for one hour tomorrow. OK, the following day, let's wear it for two hours. The and believe me, and you're going to get mom, I can't breathe, uh, but but practice makes perfect, right? So, um, and who knows? I mean, we don't know how long this COVID will last. And so this might be, you know, uh, till next summer. I mean, there's no telling, right? Until we get our um, a vaccination for everybody. Go ahead. So they wanna know what masks are going to be required, medical or custom or uh, face shields. So that's a great question. HISD is going to be providing masks for children on a daily basis. 
But uh, if your child has a cloth ma a mask, they are welcome to bring their own as long as they are acceptable for work and uh, school. Are there any more textbooks or workbooks going home? Are there any more textbooks? Yes, so if, if we sent a first batch of textbooks, will there be a second uh, if when teachers return and they have other books that they want students to have? Those that, that know, are home. I know that yesterday. So opportunities for yeah, I know that up. yesterday some of our upper grades, I believe it might have been Miss Sleeper, had mentioned that the fifth grade team wanted to pass out more information. So uh, if if items need to be passed out, by all means, we will definitely do, but definitely a drive by. Nothing where people get to get off and we're, we're going to continue our social distancing. Mm -hmm. What temperature is considered for the children to have a fever? I believe I know our nurse is not here now, but I believe it's anything over 98.5. She's not on here, is she? Our school nurse? I don't see her, but I'm not sure. Okay, not a problem. So if no YMCA that changes my child going face to face, um, if that was the case, then I would have maybe changed to virtual. So um, I guess, Ms. Bernard, you can also contact um, the school here and we can um, talk to you, maybe individual basis, whatever it may be. Thanks. I noticed that in the video, this is another question, the student being asked if they have been around or exposed to anyone of COVID, is that necessary to ask them? Yes, yes, it, uh, you know, a lot of schools, um, they're just saying take the temperature of the child, but especially for our older students, uh, please know that we have employees that also are, are just as worried about their health and so our job is to make sure, you know, if we if we when we have a child coming into the front gate and they take their temperature, if they have a coughing, have the sore throat, if they have, and then here's this uh, the the strange thing about that, we can't tell the difference between COVID symptoms and the common cold. We haven't even started the flu season or the cold season, so um, yeah, th those are those are questions that you know we ask every single employee. Oh, and traveling is, uh, I, I know that yesterday we had a question. When you say, did, have you traveled or whatever, we're not really asking children have they traveled because that question pertains to out of the country. So please know we do have some families that do go out of the country and we need to be made aware of that. I have two more minutes, Ms. Vicente. Okay. If you want to finish off a couple more questions, but please, 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 do continue with the questions on here because we are going to go to the Spanish version. So is there a drop off time for kinder and first grade? And I believe the person may have not captured the whole the um, PowerPoint so they can go back. But yes, sure. there is a different time 750 for kinder and I believe it's 745 for first grade or so, Ms. Strickland. Mm -hmm. In the morning. Perhaps if this question was answered, if our kids are staying virtual, will I keep, will they keep their teacher? And yes, we said they would keep their teacher. Are kids expected to stay online longer after in-person starts since dismissal for face-to-face -face is at three, but my child right now logs off at 150? No, ma'am, we're following the, the schedule, the virtual schedule that we have right now. And then to confirm the schedule for virtual remains the same, even what uh, some students return for face to face example yes, right now. The day starts at 730, but with the face to face it resumes at, it starts later. Those are the changes I'm referring to. How will the daily schedule change for those continuing virtual? And yes, well, it will it will change a bit because of SEL. But again, the teacher will capture that during the day. Technology question, do students bring their own technology to campus every day? You know, the answer to that question is we would like for that to happen. I know that we have many children that a parent will say, 
you know, uh, my my child has uh, has an iPad and they're too little and then for them to come bring it back and forth when they're here. We really want them to be focused on their um, working on paper, writing, doing more things, right? And it all it's only their items, not sharing, because I want to repeat there is no sharing, but um, but that's something that our teachers will be able to talk to individual parents and children about in case they need to have more technology brought to school. I now have four o'clock. I want to thank everybody. Please continue to put your questions on our chat. We will be able to have the answers. But I did want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Join us for the Spanish version. If you do, if you are bilingual and you speak both languages, please feel free to join us. But I do want to say several things. Number one, this is recorded and you're welcome to find it on the school land trip website under resources and then underneath that it says parent resources. So if you need to see the video, it will be there. There will be a video in English and there will be a video in Spanish. We just made the video yesterday, so I want to say a shout out to our magnet coordinator, Ms. Akhtar. She worked so hard to put it together to show it to you today. The Spanish version is not complete, but it will be done by Thursday. Again, we want to thank everybody for joining us. Please know we love our children. We love our employees and know that you are very important to us. We want safety is of the utmost importance and we look forward to seeing everybody. Continue to write questions if you have them. Thank you, Landtrip. Have a good evening.